everyone, and welcome to the Path Radio Spotlight. I'm your host, Guido Perino, and with me on the show is the Axeman behind the Songs of White Lion, Volume 1 and 2, featured in Guitar World magazine from Los Angeles, guitarist, vocalist, and producer, sharing his new single with us, Long Way Down, Marcus Nan. Marcus, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. How are you tonight? I'm great. Thanks, uh, Guido. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking an interest in my music. And thank you for the chat we're going to have, too. Uh, along with everybody else and those beautiful guitars you have in the background. We were chatting beforehand and, and I've already fallen in love with most of them. Never mind. And that's even before you start playing, Marcus. That's <laughs> that's the crazy thing, right? So, look, I, I said you're from Los Angeles, but your, yeah. roots, your birth roots are from Maryside, yeah. England, right? Yep. Merseyside, right? England. Yes. Yeah, it's been um, a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. But you've also lived in Spain. And I was yeah. just curious, you know, having come over and having lived in Spain, what are your first impressions? You come to America, um, you know, what, what do you think of when you first kind of get here and, and go? Well, uh, that it's going back because I arrived in, in 90. I was 18 years yeah. old and I came in 90. Um, wow. And uh, it was to me america was always the place where anything was possible right it's uh it was a great place to be and especially coming to la at that time uh for for music and especially rock i mean there was no other place like it you know so i think i think even people you know people from new york and people from other states were coming here because this was this was the place to be at the time and uh so it was it was an amazing experience i i initially came out to go to git um so, uh, you know, I graduated in 91 and um, but that was just the catalyst of of of, <clears throat> of arriving here. And and I always sort of knew I was going to be in the States because that's, the you know, it was synonymous with 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 rock and, and, rock uh, and roll. You know, pursuing <laughs> a career in music. Yeah. <laughs> Did it has it lived up to your expectations? America, like the U.S. and all that. Has it lived up to the expectations? Oh, it's a, that's, that's a tough question, that's eh? A, that's, a, yeah. huh? that's a, yeah, good question. Yeah. It has, it has. It's a little disappointing lately, yeah, but it uh, it certainly has. <laughs> <laughs> we won't, we won't get too deep into that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring it back to music, Guido. So about music and the guitar, and we, we, I mean, we talked about the guitars in the background. It's been part of your life since you're a young child, uh, yes. about the age of seven. Um, and, you know, when I say that, when I when I mention that an artist picks up an instrument at such an early age, we're like, oh, it's so cute. Right. Because twinkle, twinkle, little star and all that. Right. Yeah. But but give us some context. I mean, um, you know, what what did guitar or music mean to you, um, you know, at the young age? And you say you come over here at 18 and you're you know, you're doing the rock stuff. So. Um, were you already deep into it or, or was this something you just fell into sort of thing or? It, it, I wasn't deep into it. Um, but, uh, it, it, it's sort of one of those things and I, I'm sure uh, lots of musicians and guitar players may sort of have, have had this feeling. It sort of finds you, you know, uh, it, it sort of finds you and, and, and the situations lead up to you sort of stumbling into it right it's mm -hmm. it's like uh it's like something that was going to happen well it seems like that anyway when you look back it's easy to say those things right you don't know it at the time but i but i come from a, a long line of um uh traditional indian musicians you know my, my dad's from from fiji he's indian yeah. from the fiji island so so my my ancestors um as far as we know um as far as we can go back have, have all been musicians so um it, it sort of found me and, and um when i i first started playing the guitar it it um i mean it didn't it wasn't natural by any means you know because yeah. it, it, it's it's a skill you have to develop i think <clears throat> i think the predispositions is sort of there and and the uh you know the the way that it finds you how far you take it then is a different story you know you can take it as 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 far as you want or or, or you know you don't take it far at all i think then that depends on you know on you but i think the the fact that uh that i that i discovered the guitar yeah. or it, it was sort of the opposite it's it discovered of, you did you yeah. did you have a little bit of a nudge from from the family in any way because i did of, yes I did, yes did. i did and, and i know my dad was you know he obviously knew his yeah. family past and being music so i think he probably suspected that i i might be um you know, I might have some affinity with it and, and push me in, in different areas of music. And the guitar was finally what, what, uh, did you ever throw him a thanks dad or 
<laughs> oh man, I, I constantly tell them that that I I wouldn't have accomplished anything without without my parents' help. I mean, uh, you know, I, a lot of, I know a lot of musicians that feel the same way about the the folks too. It's just like yeah, having I, that support is absolutely the greatest thing. I, I I just I wish for every young musician or non musician to have the support from their parents in whatever they endeavor. It makes every bit of difference. I hear that a lot, and you know what I hear a lot from. Um, musicians who uh, were introduced to the piano or keyboards, right? Yeah. Oh, I hate it. I hated my parents for making me do that. But then they're like, man, I'm so glad they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I recently have gone through something similar with my with my nephews who who um, you know, who were studying what the the older one was studying piano, and I and I really noticed this from when I was a kid, and 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 it's reinforced from watching what the teachers teach them. Because yeah. I think there's, I think teachers. Piano teachers have it the the wrong way around lately, especially when they're dealing with kids. I don't think they should be so focused on theory and making kids read and understand solfeo and all, all that stuff. I think it should be more, you know, play your favorite songs or like, what do you like? You know, that, that sort of thing. And I think then if they do want to learn how to yeah. read it, you know, they can. But I, I think that's a big mistake. And, and kids just shut down uh, you know i i think you're honest so yeah. look at by no means am i a, a musician or a, you know a professional musician of any kind right i it's a hobby i have guitars i learned some stuff but the way that i learned i can't read music the way that i learned was i uh, just started listening to the song and then started learning chords i started learning songs that i liked first right exactly and exactly. and that's where it kind of evolved from now my kids it's a little bit different they, they well they started that way too but yeah. now they're kind of getting into the other parts, right? Where they're right. going, right. oh, wait, let me figure out how are they doing this? Or oh, let me, and they oh, can't right. do the music where I still can't. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I think you're onto something. Look, we talked about family influences growing up in Spain and, and you love, you love the blues, you love rock music. Um, were your musical influences outside your family closer to home in Spain, or were you more drawn to some of the things that were going on uh, in America or the other international bands? Well, in initially it was always what was what was you know going on in America and Canada because I was a big massive Rush fan. I was going to say Rush. It's got to yeah. be Rush. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that that really you know made me think about being outside of Spain and and pursuing something that that was in a different you know in a different land, so to speak. It was really sort of magical and, and you know, got your imagination going. But it, but but shortly after uh, discovering a lot of that stuff, I I, re I discovered flamenco in Spain um, because I, I there, there was a big local, there was a big gypsy community locally. And um, I, uh, I, I, they sort of accepted me into that because they, you know, they, they gypsies know that they come from India initially. Yeah. Uh, they are originate from India. So, so they sort of accepted me into the, um, you know, circle. And, and so I was able to study flamenco with, with, uh, you know, one of the, one of the leading local gypsy guitarists at the time, I'm still in touch with him. He's a, he's a dear friend of mine and he's a big inspiration. So, um, so, and that sort of, you know, the proficiency in flamenco, it was similar, it reminded me at the, at the time it's, it's was sort of like the, that proficient style of guitar playing and rock that, that I was into yeah. at the time. So, so there were definitely similarities there, you know, when you, and when you say, when you say proficiency, are you talking about the detail, like the, the, the intricacy of it? Yeah. The technical yeah. aspects of it. Yeah. The, the real, the real technical aspects of, of flamenco guitar playing and the technical, like, technical aspects of the styles of rock that were happening back then, you know, and that was even like, you know, we're talking, um you know 84 85 86 so yeah. so even even white lion with vito bratto and that proficiency yeah. was was happening at that time and, and uh so yeah, yes absolutely. there were some similarities well listen thanks for giving props to rush and I, I gotta you know what's interesting um being here in canada and yeah. growing up with rush yeah I, I think I've taken them for granted because a lot of the musicians I talk to when they talk Canada like oh rush right <laughs> and I started to realize just even now, like when you said it, I'm like, man, this is like, you know, more than a dozen have said rush, right? Rush. And I think, yeah, right. yeah rush, rush, right? Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I mean, love with rush, them, rush, right? Rush were different to me at the time. Like they were different than anybody else. They they had a they had a futuristic sound and, and a technological sound that this sort of reinforced the notion that anything was possible for me anyway. 
they, and and lyrically they just they just made me dream. I'm, I used to spend hours reading the lyrics and 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 you know, I, I'm not alone in in that. That's another, no, I know, don't think you are. I know. now. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and, and uh, I got to listen to the catalog because uh, you guys are all keep talking about it. I'm like, it's not that I don't listen to them, but I got to listen to them differently. I think it's an incredible <laughs> body of work, it, an <laughs> amazing body of work. I, I just absolutely astonishing. Look, you and you talked, you talked gypsies and flamenco and you've worked with a lot of different talent through the years. I mean, uh, you, you wrote some demo stuff for a rat opportunity. Uh, you did some solo work for Rod Stewart. And, yeah. and some might say, look, you got a broad range of work. Um, is is diversification part of your identity as a musician? Or did you just simply embrace the opportunities as, as they came along, Marcus? I think it's a bit of both. I think uh, I think the, the diversification is is based in curiosity of different styles and, and knowing that how much is is available to us as, as, as musicians when we look in other, you know, in styles that aren't our own when we're a little uncomfortable, when we investigate some stuff and, and especially, you know, discovering flamenco and, and having the Indian influence. And yeah. I, I was always, I was always aware of, of music being like a language and, and it evolves according to how people have moved around the planet and, and, and mix things. And, you know, mm. um, that's, how, I mean, flamenco is a big, big, you know, that's how uh, it sort of evolved. Um, but um, it, I, I think so it, based in curiosity and uh, and then the opportunities, obviously, because, you know, you just want to do as much as you possibly can and and working with different yeah. artists and, diff you know, that, that's the that's the way to that's the way to, if, you know, to to get further. And it's also a way to grow, you know, yourself as, as a player and a musician. Right. It's an interesting approach because sometimes, you know, as a as a musician or you you try to seek out an identity and you kind of set yourself in that identity and you don't veer out too far. And sometimes you get typecast, right? You're like, yeah. oh yeah, that's the rock guy, right? Yeah. But like yeah. when I look at your when I look at your body of work and you're, you know, you do all these different pockets and and you go, man, that guy's talented in a lot of different areas. And and your curiosity has kind of led to this evolution of these different styles that you incorporate into your music. Yeah. Uh, which makes it fun to listen to. Cause sometimes you go, you get a little, you get a little variety, right? You get a little something different every time that you're uh, listening to it. Um, at some point in your music in your uh, music journey, uh, you're in Los Angeles, you meet and you start working with Mike Tramp as the rhythm guitarist. Yeah. Uh, at the yes. time of the heavy metal band Freak of Nature. Yes. Uh, and as I mentioned, you're, I mentioned in the intro, you're working with Mike on a new project without getting too much into deep that, because we will in a couple of questions. What are some of the differences working with him now versus then? Um, well, he's a lot nicer now. <laughs> <laughs> um, some uh, of the, some of the things, some of the differences working then as opposed to now. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So, when I first joined uh, Freak of Nature, I was I was a, I was a kid, so I, I really, um, you know, I really maybe didn't know how to get the most out of, not get the most out of, contribute the mm. most to a situation because, you know, it, everything was kind of new and and I was a, you know, a little bit a little bit wild and 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 stuff, you know, um, so. The difference is now uh, I can contribute a lot more mm. uh, than I did back then, right? Um, I can contribute production stuff and and I can contribute, uh, you know, my experience and and Mike values that too, right? So, so I, I would say more than a difference with how he is, it's a difference how how with with me, you know. Interesting, uh, interesting. I, right? It's like the, I mean, we're talking, we're talking. Freak of nature, we are talking uh 93. So yeah. that's what 20 21 years ago, right? Yeah, I was just curious, you know, because there's an evolution, and I think maybe part of your own evolution, what if I read between the lines, is your uh situational awareness might be even different and your own self uh, self acuity might be different. Oh, absolutely, so, absolutely. Uh, and I th I think yeah. everybody you know develops that as they get older, you know, and, yeah. and, and especially in music, you sort of Understand by oh by, by the way, 31 years, not 21 years. <laughs> years. I, I'm trying to be nice here. <laughs> <laughs> so um 
Yeah, I think I think we just we just grow as people, right? So we grow as people, we grow as musicians, and we can contribute more to the situation. <laughs> and I think that's the that's hands down across the board. Whatever you're doing, that's the case. I think it's it's almost like uh, you know the, the the child leaves home and they and then they go back and they say, "Geez, my parents uh, my parents have changed, right?" But it's really <laughs> our, we yeah. we change, right? We change when we right, grow up. right, right, right. And you go, and 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 oh, shout out. Shout out to Mike for being nicer now. So, uh, <laughs> how do you end up? How do you end up circling back and working with Mike on songs of White Lion? Okay, so we we were, you know, we did some tours uh, just as a duo um, in Spain. Uh, we did some in England, uh, and we did the States too. Um, and we, it was basically uh, we were playing his material, but. His solo material, because you know he has like 13 yeah. solo albums. That, that, yeah. that, you know, so we were doing his material, and then you know, we had to have some classic white lion songs in the set because that's what people want to hear. Sure. And at that time we were sort of doing them in the style of, of his solo stuff. So it was more like Tom Petty, that sort of you know, strummy yeah. stuff. And then um I started adding a little bit you know, more of the, the original parts and playing the solos a little bit more like the original and stuff. I'm sorry. And, um, <clears throat> and then, um, you know, he, he started feeling that he, he gets asked so much to be, you know, to do white line songs. So we thought, okay, why not, instead of running from it, why not? I, I just embrace it, embrace it and, and, you know, and, and do it. And, yeah. and, people are very happy to hear those songs it meant a lot to them when they were you know when they were you know young adults and, and going through times of development themselves and it really really meant a lot to them so i was sort of charged with the with the task of learning all the the solos and all the parts and then wow. sort of packaging it together to where mike it was a comfortable range for mike to sing you know how he currently sings right which was a, was a you know lower keys a little bit slow a little bit more yeah. you know relaxed and stuff so that's that's how the how it evolved into this so just from starting to work together you you brought it back it's funny you're talking about that and and some of that you know his journey i'm a bit of a pack rat i think i still have some mike tramp uh posters from hit parader stashed away in my file <laughs> cabinet from back in the day too so um, you know, when, when things were a little different, look, I, I mean, this next question in a very complimentary way to both of you, um, when you're doing the white lion songs, is there a shadow of Vito Brada that, that still looms in the song or songs or with the band itself? Um, you know, I've been asked that question before and, and it is, it, it, there isn't, uh, I know, I, I, I don't want to sound like, a you know, um, you know, falsely confident or, or, or conceited in any way. But to me, it's about serving the stuff that he did. He He's such a, right. a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant player. He, he was he was such a unique player. <clears throat> so I, I figured out from an early, you know, because I was a fan of that stuff, too. Yeah. And I figured out from an early uh, point in the as we were putting stuff together, that the only way to do this were, were, was was to be as get as to get as close as I could to what he did, and I can never play exactly like he played because because nobody can, right? Nobody can play like anybody. No, it's it's signature, right? You have your yeah. your signature too, so absolutely. But I wanted to I wanted to do the best job I could to serve the music that they'd written because the the big thing is fans don't want to hear anything other than those original parts, and yeah. and we're lucky in a way that Mike didn't play those songs for for. 20 years or whatever it was or more because now people really want to hear them and and they want to hear them as they were so i'm doing my best to to serve that stuff um you know and uh do you take, do you in a way they'll put a, a marcus nan stamp on it well not 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 i don't go out of my way to but i think just right. the fact that what would somebody plays somebody else's parts you know the, uh, the, that just it just happens automatically. My sound is a little different than his. It, it, I, I have a I play low again, and um, I, I I would say my sound has a little bit. It's a little bit less. Um, it has a bit of a it has some less finesse in it. I think it's a bit more scrappy because I play on a strat. So it's like a you know there's some Rory Gallagher in there which I'm a big fan of and 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 
some Gary Moore and, and uh, you know, Thin Lizzy and that that sort of stuff is in there. So I, I think that just happens automatically. Some some great some great uh, names there. Um, look, for Songs of White Lion Volume 2, you're not just playing in it, but you're also producing it. Yes. How much does that change the, the mix of the songs or the vibe for you? Well, um, what I wanted to do in, in this production is I wanted to get it a little bit more raw. Uh, I didn't want to over overcorrect anything. I wanted to get it to where it sounded more like a band. I think... Um, so that was my that was my my main thing. That's that's the main thing I wanted to do. When uh, you say that, do you mean like just something more live? Well, just the, just sort of the way uh, the way the drums are treated, the way the the performances were treated, and and the the way the way it's sort of put together. Uh, we we did it the same way as we did the first one. So we did drums, bass, and rhythm guitar. We did that together. I then uh, then some of the you know the drums are corrected a little bit so i redid my guitars and and we sort of did it the same way but um i didn't want to go overboard on perfection on this record i wanted it to feel a little bit more live and i and i think we captured that you i don't know if you've heard it yet um but i uh, haven't no i haven't yeah, heard it. okay yeah and that's why i'm wondering so you wanted to you wanted to leave some of the nuances in is what i what i'm thinking. yeah yeah especially yeah. especially on drums and you know especially in the rhythm section i didn't want to yeah. really get over over uh, correcting with with the drums i didn't want everything to be gridded and and you know i wanted it to be a little loose you know do you think it so producer question right do you think and and you know I, i'm not disparaging any of the music that's out there today or any of the new stuff by any means it's really just that do you think we overproduce music these days like do you think we try to be so studio perfect that it takes away sometimes from from that experience i do i do yeah. for certain things but for some things that really works yeah but uh, but we're, we're the the difference is now because the, the way we create records is most of the time we create them in isolation so you yeah. know we drums and then you overdub the bass and everything's an overdub right so and i heard somebody talking about this the other day i can't remember who it was but it was a really great point and um, w when you're in the studio with other musicians, everybody is listening to the other person. Everybody sort of self edits everything sort of, you don't want to step on anybody's toes. And so everything with experienced players, everything sort of happens in, in, in that way, right? That people are listening yeah. to each other and interacting with each other. So when, when you overdub a part, let's say you're overdubbing guitars, you're interacting with the players that are on there because it's your nature and you're listening and stuff, but they aren't to you. So the, right. so the, the whole transaction is a little one-sided. Yeah. I, you know, and as you're saying this, Marcus, the last few years, we've gone through this transition where um, it doesn't matter where we live, right? Like I, if I say to you, Hey Marcus, I'm going to send you my guitar track. Right. You get my guitar track. You hear it. You're I'm not there. You're right. dealing with that, right? And I, so I did it in isolation. And, and so maybe it does. Maybe it takes away something from from that experience. And no doubt, you know, no doubt, because when you when you're recording something, it you you're really capturing an interaction between people, aren't you? Yeah. Between players. So, as I said, I can be interacting with something that's already recorded, but yeah. but the people who recorded aren't interacting with me. So it's it's it doesn't yeah. have all the elements of of push pull. And we're and we're dealing with music. We're dealing with an art, right? We're dealing with something that's meant to be creative, right? Not uh, that doesn't mean that I alone can't create a good song. Well, or you alone can't create a good piece. No, of it doesn't. Music. It doesn't mean that. But, and and certain some styles benefit yeah. from from that that clinical approach. I mean, there, yeah. there's no doubt, right? Some some things benefit, but um, some things so, don't. Volume two of of the songs of wet line uh you're you guys are getting i think this august right it's going to be released as an album yes it's coming okay. out in august yeah right before we tour yeah and uh the, i was gonna say the tour the tour shows uh are those going to ramp up a little bit more now that you're gonna have the two volumes or yes i mean we're, we're, we're planning on we're doing a nine-week tour starting in in uh august in the middle of august uh in the u.s and we're, we're currently booking dates and we're, we're going to have a ton of dates on that um and then then we go to europe after that in the fall and we open for the dead daisies i think we're doing 17 shows or something like that with them 
um and then uh next year now now we're booking festivals and stuff but for next year next summer and, and things but uh yeah i always say i gotta get you guys gotta get you guys to canada are you are you think you're gonna be in michigan or any anywhere close to we are i, I think we're playing ah. we're playing diesel in uh where is diesel it's in michigan um i'd have to i'll look it up for you and send it to you so you have it yeah 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 that'll be <laughs> that'll be kind of interesting so look while you're doing the white lion stuff uh, you're also worked on a solo album called The Traveler. Yes. yes. Are you the traveler? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I, the traveler's just a, it was just a character that I thought about, you know? No, I, I'm not the traveler. Who is the traveler? Who's the it character? Was a, it was a, it, well, it was, it's a title track of the, the record. It's a, it was a, it's a, a traveler that comes from a, a, a different time and place, maybe a different dimension that came with a message oh. to 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 give us here on earth um i just thought it was a cool title I, I wouldn't want to read too much into it but it was a really good really cool title i like it too <laughs> i just i want to know more <laughs> um so uh, your solo album the traveler it's also set to release august 2nd yeah uh, via cleopatra records Cleopatra Records, yes. Cleopatra Records. Yeah. Uh, are we going to hear those songs slide any into any of the white lion shows no, unfortunately not, because oh. I I don't I think fans just want to hear Mike sing White the White Lion stuff. I I will be you know selling the record at the at the, yeah. uh, at the shows, and I do plan on doing some shows of of my own. You know, putting a putting a situation together so we can tour and do some shows with that. So I'll be really looking forward to that. And, and uh, where do we find? Are we going to find that out at, at MarcusNan.com? Uh, the your your tour shows? Yeah, I'm, I haven't booked anything yet because I, I'm so busy with with Mike. But okay. uh, you know, to, probably towards the end of the year, when I see how the following year is looking, I'll I'll know when when I'm able to do that, and I'll and I'll fit I'll fit some some shows in. Cool. We'll yeah. look forward. We'll look yeah. forward to that. Um. So you recently also <clears throat> a single called "Long Way Down." It's yes. the first single from your solo album, "The Traveler." Uh, and the song, it sports some memorizing worthy lyrics. It's got a catchy rock undertone. I was singing it just before we uh, before we got on here, just to, yeah, you know, rocking along. Uh, what gave birth to this song? It's story, lyrics, music. It sounds like a kind of a pretty straightforward song to me, and it's fun, but is there is there more to it? Well, I, the, the whole record has a lot of progressive stuff on there, and it's, you know, there's some sort of like what you consider, you know, intellectual type lyrics and things like yeah. that. And I just wanted a straight ahead rock song. Um, which uh, I'm not the greatest of coming up with straight ahead rock songs about a guy and a girl. So I I got I got help uh, lyrically from my uh, dear friend uh, Jeff Paris, who's who's a fantastic writer. Um, and uh, so you know I had the music and and he came up with the lyrics and and we worked on the melody together. And uh, so it was a definite definite collaboration. This this song. Well, thanks, Jeff. It's got it's got yeah. some good catch. Are you are you looking to release more songs before the album comes out? Yes, I'm, uh, there's a single, another single coming out um, in about uh, when is it coming out? I believe it's the 20th of June, and then there'll be another single coming out that Mike Tramp sings on with me right before the tour, um, just just right before the you know the August second. Um, so maybe late maybe late July. Uh, no, actually, uh, late, um, late, Ju yeah, late July, of course. What July. am I? Th I'm, yeah, yeah, I was thinking the opposite. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's late okay. July. How many songs are on your album? It's a ten, ten albums. I mean, a ten, uh, ten, song. ten song album. Yep. Right on. Uh, yeah. And so you gave us a little bit of a hint there. Are we looking at them having at the songs having the same energy as Long Way Down, or uh, how do you mix it up with the they, other? With the they other all songs? have this. They all have the same energy. They're they're all pretty much uh, guitar driven songs with a with a similar approach in the rhythm section. Some a little bit more uh, progressive, and and you know I can stretch out musically a little bit in some of them. They they're all written to be uh, as as good of a song as I can write. Uh, so it, it's not just a guitar record. Yeah, uh, I, I really made an effort to try and sing as as well as I could and deliver the songs as well, I could, well as I can and write, you know, the writing. I, I really try to to make sure that they were they were good songs. So um, 
you know, and then also that they're always an excuse for for guitar and layers. Of course. And, and, you know, <laughs> the other stuff. No, you got some. You got some. Look at long way down. If that's if that's the indicator, uh, I'm pretty pumped about hearing the rest of it. I'm, well, I'm thank you. As well, I think it's a it's a solid tune, and and I think we're gonna have some fun with it. Talking about guitar, and I mentioned it earlier. Uh, the the you know your red your red and white guitar behind you. Yeah. Um, I think that's your main guitar, right? That's the main guitar work I I play with uh with Mike Tramp, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you want to have a look at it? Yeah, sure. What what do we got? What do we got there, Marcus? What is it? It's a, it's, an, it's it's an exotic. Uh, it's um you know, it's obviously a strat. It's all handmade. Yeah. Um you know, it's got the the fla the, the flame roasted maple neck, which is great mm -hmm. and rosewood. And I got a Seymour Duncan uh JB in that, which I'm trying. <laughs> um it's it's a little bit higher output than I normally used to, but I but yeah. I back it up the strings and and you know and I'm not too gainy on the amp, so I'm just able to play strats very well and I mean I feel comfortable on them. Yeah. And uh, and uh, you know they they do they do the job. It was my first started on a strat, so it's always the you know what I gravitate to. I can't play Les Pauls. I can't, <laughs> I can't either, but <laughs> it's a hard guitar to play. I, I, I and I've I've had this conversation with a number of guys, a number of Strat and Telly guys that that have a tough time in a Les Paul. I'm one yeah. of them. I like the way they look and everything. I it's just, so do I. Yeah, it's just it's just I don't know. There's something about it. But so look well, at like the arch top, the arch top sort of thing, and the way the neck the neck is 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 angled to me is is difficult. And and then the scale is different different too. Yeah, I always thought they had a I always thought they had a wider neck for some reason. All the ones I tried, anyways, um, yeah. compared to some of the fenders that I tried. But um, that guitar, so like it looks like it's been a few places. Yeah. Um, if I was to ask the guitar a question, you know, if I was <laughs> to say what's its favorite tale to tell, what would the guitar tell me? <laughs> not being left anywhere i think it's always, always being looked after <laughs> I mean, nice frets you know and uh being looked after i would say it would say that it's felt love it's felt love for mark felt loved i would say that's a good, <laughs> a good thing yeah no there's not a, there's not a lot of rock and roll stories in, involved it's more of a, it's more uh you know you've taken care, you've taken care of it and looked after it yeah. Uh, look for fans. You have your website, marcusnan.com. Yes. I see you have all the social media platforms. You got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. I always ask it like the, the artists and the musicians who come on is do you have, is one of them more favorite than the other in terms of I'm what trying you're trying to get people on Instagram, but everybody wants ah. to go to Facebook. So I'm just going to have to go with that. So I've got more, more people on Facebook. Um, so yeah, so either either Facebook or Instagram. I always, if I do posts, I post on both of them at yeah. the same time, you know. And uh, I won't I leave keep, anybody. I out. keep hearing that artists keep telling me that their Facebook seems to be taking off more than any of the other. I don't know why. I can't. I don't have a a a, a rhythm reason here. It's just. I think it's because I think it's because of the demographic and uh, the the Facebook and Instagram demographic. I think yeah. Facebook are probably people. In, at the ages that would be interested in what we're doing more yeah. than the, the, than the Insta, I think. But so, like you're talking about Instagram, I've seen you interact with folks on on socials, uh, especially Instagram. Like you know, you're putting out stuff and you're saying, "Hey, anybody who's who's looking at what setup I'm using, this is what I'm using," and people yeah. are leaving comments. Uh, is that something you're going to continue doing? Like I, I don't. Yeah, I love I love that. I'm a dork. I love uh, all of the aspects of of the the technical aspects of guitar and music, and uh, you know, I love talking about technical stuff, and you know, lo I I love all that stuff. So yeah, so it, and and also I know, you know, when I was a young player, it was really difficult to to find out anything about what people were using and, and yeah. how they set stuff up and all that stuff. So if anybody asked me now, you know, I, I'm very happy to just share everything that, you know, especially young players, if young players are, are asking and stuff, I'm really want them to know as much as they can. And, and you know, so, so <clears throat> they can just concentrate on, on making music, you know? That's awesome. That's so good to hear. I know like, you know, when I was you know just starting out and, and trying to learn as a, as a young teenager, um, we didn't have all the resources that that are out there today, and the guys yeah. that I knew who knew how to play didn't really want to. It was like a secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was it was so hard for them, I think, to to arrive at the at the what they worked for them, right? Yeah, they, they thought, no, you got to work for it too. 
Yeah, there wasn't a whole yeah. lot of sharing. But listen, I, I appreciate everything you've shared with us here today, uh, your own uh, personal music, your stories, your journey, the stuff you're doing with uh, with Mike and, and White Lion. Um, you know, uh, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Uh, I've asked you a ton of questions, uh, maybe more than you thought I, I was going to. Oh, I love it. Uh, you know, is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with before before you get going? Huh, just well, I, I'm going to be, you know, like I like we talked about, I'm going to re be releasing, you know, a couple of singles before my record comes out. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm really hoping that that uh, that it it will be enjoyed by some people. And uh, I'm very excited to be sharing my music and, and my songs and my playing. And I know, you know, I'm I'm getting sort of, um, um, you know, to where I can use what I'm doing with Mike as as a as a platform to to share some music that I think people may to may take some interest in you know it's it's I'm honored that about that you know so uh so yeah so hopefully people enjoy it and and, and have a listen and find something in there that they that they can take to thank you Marcus that is Marcus Nan who said anything was possible was what he was expecting when he came and now he's living the possibilities, the guitar, now the producer behind Songs of White Lion, alongside vocalist Mike Tramp, now also giving us The Traveler, a solo album with a new single, Long Way Down. I will have Marcus's website and other information on the show notes. Watch for the new album, The Traveler and The Songs of White Lion, Volume 2. Marcus, thank you so much, and I hope we get to catch up again. Thank you, Guido. It's been an absolute pleasure, and 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 thank you for taking an interest in, in my music and, and what I'm doing. Really, really great. Thank you.